Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna just start here. We can obviously see what's going on right there with the ES hitting a new high, which is exactly really what you want. You want that push up and we're getting it. So that's really important for us. And it's really important for us to understand. I don't think we're gonna spend a lot of time looking at the indexes. I don't think there's a lot of value in me going, look, we're going so much higher. Uh, we really don't know if we're going higher or lower here, but it certainly looks that way. We're starting to see a lot of activity here that would suggest that. I think what's most important is for us to understand where the puck is going, not where it's been. So we're gonna dive right into it today. We have a ton of data to go through. I'm gonna give you three different ways that you could find edge in the market, both economically, macroly, fundamentally. We're gonna talk a lot about process today. There's a lot of things I see out there that people are just getting 100% wrong if they're traders. So I wanna focus on that today. I don't think there's as much value in me just saying, look at the socks, uh, look how it's performing. I think it'd be more interesting to focus on things and say, look at XLI and what the heck is going on there. Why is XLY going higher? And why are all the energy names moving? And is that going to continue? I think there's value in there. I think there's value in me explaining to you today why NVIDIA did what it did why everybody that bought here was last to know and how you can you know, not be that person. I think that there's more value in that. I think there's more value in me explaining RSP and what's happening here and why this is hitting to your highs. I think that's worth it today. So this video is gonna be hyper-focused and we're gonna jump right into it. Now, one of the things I think is extremely overlooked is to look at data over the years, really the decades. And one of the things that we're seeing here is this is the S&P and this is the equal weighted S&P which people know as RSP when they look at it as an ETF. But there's a couple things here that I think are really important. And I just want to start by saying, if we look at the fifth longest streak in the index history, and then people say, well, what, what does that mean? It's the fifth longest streak. Well, you have days before you've hit a two year high. So what, do you, what does that mean? Well, we have not hit a two year high on this for this amount of days. So if you come across and you draw a line straight here, you'll see that they're saying this is the fifth time in history. And you'll see very clearly that one, two, three, four, five, that they are right. And this goes back to, they went all the way back to 57. And again, this is not me, but this is a corporation right here in their symbol. And it's right down here, you can see it, but it's Sediment Trader, it's right down there. Now, why is this important? I just wanna give credit. This is not my research, this is their research. But if you know anything about me and you watch these videos, I am really big on fundamental analysis on what's going on in the market, market trends, things like that. I use that stool as a symbol where you have macro, fundamental, and technical. And you always wanna understand the nuances of this and you always wanna understand how they all are connected and how they all play along. So what does that mean for us? The sole purpose of doing this, the very sole purpose of doing any research is to give you an edge. And one of the things that we're gonna spend time on and it's been clear to me in your comments, and I appreciate your comments because it helps me understand as someone who's trying to inform and educate on how I see the world, and hopefully you can benefit from that. One of the things about this is I can then look at this and go, okay, this is what this is how people have to get it. Like, like instead of me saying like this in a bowl of soup gets you a bowl of soup, it lets me understand how you connect the dots. I'm constantly looking for edge. And one of the things that I refer to a lot is this concept of reflexivity. And where I'm going with that is I look at the world and say, okay, how can I put us in a position where we can get ahead? Meaning, if these are expectations and this is the outcome, right? So these are the expectations and this is the outcome. How do we get to be involved here versus the people that are involved here? And there's no clearer example of this than NVIDIA over the past two, three days. And we're, we will be addressing that and how you can get ahead of something like a NVIDIA and be prepared for something like a NVIDIA ahead of time. And we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. So I think that's very important as well. But understand that this is the same process over and over again, so let's get to it. This is the fifth longest streak in the index history. This index they're referring to is the S&P equal weight. That is the RSP, number of sessions since a two year high, five. Okay, what is this telling you? This tells you that you're broadening out. So one of the things I keep seeing on social media, and I really am gonna start hammering this through people's heads to start calling their feed. Watch who you listen to. We've had people on here that, that have been telling me that people have been telling them to shorten the video for two years. How's that going? You know, over a trillion dollars in net worth has been made buying names like NVIDIA in the past 12 to 18 months. How much of that have you recouped after listening to some guy on Twitter? Okay, that's what you really have to ask yourself. What is the outcome and the results that you're getting? All right, one, two, three, four, five. What does this mean? It means you're broadening out. What does that mean to you? I'm glad you asked. So 
These are the times that you've broadened out. And here's the symbol of sediment trader. And once again, I just want to give credit to credit is due. This is not me that is coming out with this. And it's certainly not me uh, that put this together. But I do like this data and I am a little bit of a research nerd. But these red dots very clearly tell you, hey, this is where this happened. Now, it's kind of interesting, really, because if you look at these dates, most of them you've seen a move. But you're not seeing like the greatest move in the world. And no, we don't have 30 data points because we haven't been around that long as a society. <laughs> so this is all we have. So I, could, I, I like 30 data points because that's what's statistically significant. But I can either you know, go with what we have or I could wait another couple hundred years. And quite frankly, I'm probably not going to be here. So let's just keep going. All right. So after we look at that data, what does all that data mean to me and how can I benefit from that data? Well, there's some benefit to looking at this and saying, okay, well, what does the index do a little bit later? And this is what the index does. The index 12 months later has always been positive. Okay. And you can see the times there that it's always been positive. And you can really see the last time that this really has not happened in what, 14 years. All right. So it's been 14 years since this has happened. And if we take a look over here, there is a hundred percent chance based upon this statistic that the S&P will be higher in what, 12 months. All right. And then there's a 78% chance that you're going to be higher in a month, two months, and you just see it all up here. And then they break it down. Now, what's interesting about this is this is not at some level of huge outperformance. Sure, we earn eight and you're at 12, but it's not this enormous reading. And why, why is that? It's, it's like that because what this is showing is why you will be possible. They're starting to look for other pockets to put capital in. And haven't we all noticed that maybe a little bit, like where we're buying names like Net and then all of a sudden Net doesn't go higher, or TTT doesn't go higher, and we're going, what's going on? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if you take a look at this and you break it out, but sectors after the equal weight closed at a two-year high for the first time in more than 300 sessions. So this is a very specific, and let me move this thing out of the way, but this is a very specific thing. Sectors after equal weight S&P closed at a two-year high for the first time in more than 300 sessions. Very, very specific, right? All right. Now, this is a week, two weeks, a month, two months, three months, six months, 12 months. Now, what this does is this is us taking this data and then showing you how to utilize this data and drill down. If you know anything about how I, I look at the world besides looking at it as going macro, fundamental, technical, and there's the stool, I also am a top-down guy, meaning that I am looking at it and going, I need to know what the index is doing. Then I need to look at the sectors. Then I have to look for stocks. I want all three aligned. If all three aligned, I have a better probability of being right. Okay, You're not fighting to get to that 80% level, and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that today and get, get rid of one of the biggest misnomers out there in the world. You know, you're trying to beat a coin flip. That's really what you're trying to do with your win rate, right? You're trying to beat a coin flip. So you're fighting for inches. You're not fighting for yards as people think you are. You're fighting for inches. You're fighting for a little ground, right? So think about it. If you watch football, it's a running game. All you're doing is trying to get a yard, three yards, first down, do it again. All right, so now you have week two, three, six, 12. Got it? Good. And then what you do is you start going here and going, okay, well, first off, you're telling me that every single sector in 12 months is up if the RSI is doing this, or I'm sorry, if the RSP is doing this, apologies. So if the RSP is doing what it's doing and broadening out, now, if you think about it this way and say it's equal weight, and that doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? Like, I, of course, of course they are. Well, why wouldn't they be? Right? And so they break it out. They do a really nice thing here. They do it on cap weighted and equal weight. You can see like the first week, everyone's like, ah. And then after the second week, people are starting to buy a little bit more. By a month later, you only really have a couple sectors here that are, you know, even pink. Uh, and then you have this. But then you really go down here and go, the Utes, two Utes. And so all of a sudden, okay, so the Utes are really where we don't want to go. And they're going to be the laggards. So how would you know that they're the laggards? Well, they are the ones that what? They're red the longest. Right. All right. So that would tell you that they're red the longest. Then you would go, OK, well, what is green the shortest? And then you just start going, well, there's green in here. Well, these are green. This is green. This is green. OK, so then you would just look at this data and go, all right, well, consumer discretionary, healthcare, materials. OK, I get it. Industrials. I got it. OK, so these four sectors turn green sooner. Well, that's interesting. And then you go to equal weighted and go, well, S&P. All right. Yeah, I got it. But consumer discretionary on an equal weighted basis, that turns green first. And then you would go energy historically. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, industrials, information, and materials. All right, so they're pretty much aligned, right? Right. Okay, so how would you look at this and come up with something differentiating? Well, what you would do to start, and this is to start, is you would start going through these and going, all right, well, who's got the highest returns on the cap weighted? 
And you would go, all right, well, that would be consumer discretionary. Well, that's somewhat interesting, but okay. Communication services, sorry. And then communication discretionary. And then you would go staples, energy, all right, you get it? Healthcare, industrials, materials, and then, but then utilities kicks in. All right, so then go look at it on an equal weight basis. Well, what sticks out out of these? Well, information technologies here, materials sticks out. Well, that's kind of interesting. And then you come here and you look again, you say energy. Well, that's also interesting too, isn't it? Consumer services, consumer discretionary. So we've got these double digit returns. Is this helping us identify what sectors are going to go higher? Remember, why are we doing this? To find ideas. All this is to find stocks, to find not just a stock, but the right stocks, right? Because there's thousands of stocks, how you're going to differentiate them. And so again, what are we doing? We're going index, okay? Then we're going sector, and then we're going stock. That's what we're doing here. Great. Got it? Good. So then we do comparisons of sectors, because by comparing the sectors in greater detail, as we were just doing, we can go a little deeper into this, can't we? And then we can see how we could utilize this information to make a better decision, because what? We're not fighting for yards. Remember, we're fighting for inches, all right? So energy, percentage of stocks outperforming the S&P over last month. Why is this important? Because you don't want to wait a year. You're watching this video today and you're like, okay, it's Saturday. That's the time of recording this Saturday morning. And what you're doing, the people that always ask, like, when do you record these? When do you find the time? I, I, I get up pretty early. So I'm up usually at like five, but I'm recording these and the goal of these Saturday videos, and that you'll find this as you watch longer, they're all linked together. Saturday, I'm not gonna give you the days of the week, but you, but you get it. They're all linked together and then we talk about these ideas in the pre-market live that's public and then we also do them uh, like a post-market on the wrap-up on the day. So hopefully you're getting that this is all connected. All right, so instead of me saying, well, 12 months from now, you could really, you know, if you stay in Exxon, you're gonna do great. Uh, let's get through the week, right? <laughs> so let's, and when you see where we're going with this, you're gonna go, huh? I, I think you're gonna go, huh? But percentage of stocks outperforming the S&P over the last month. And it shows who's, what sectors are outperforming the most over the last month. Percentage of stocks outperforming over the last three months. All right. Energy. So here's our energy. Yep. 74%. Industrials, 62%. Would you have thought that energy had more names outperforming by four to one or rather three to one than information technology? Because I didn't. I certainly didn't think that until I saw this. And what are we saying? Stocks outperforming over the last three months. Okay, so you're three to one from where you were almost four to one from where you were. Industrials are pretty much in line. So the percentage of stocks outperforming in industrials has stayed stagnant. Well, people might say, well, that's not where I wanna be, isn't it? Because the same stocks have been going out, outperforming the S&P for three months. You see? So like when you look at this data, instead of saying, well, that's not where I'd wanna be, well, why wouldn't you wanna be in a sector that's been outperforming over the last three months? consistently having the same names outperform over the last three months, right? So why we wanna look at where the money's going, and obviously the money's going into energy if you're at 3X or 4X that number, right? Okay, versus saying, well, I need to go out and buy tech. Now you're talking to a guy that owns a lot of tech. Well, no, I need to be in tech, I need to be in NVIDIA, I need to be you know, in ARM because AI is gonna rule the world, Skynet, right? All right, well, the chances of you picking the right technology name just got cut in half. I was gonna say that again. The chances of you picking the right technology name randomly, randomly, just got cut in half. Why? Because percentage of stocks over the last three months were at 50%, now they're at 28. See why looking at this data is so important? See, when you look at this data, besides the, besides the point that they're trying to get across to you, right? So this is the one thing about research, and I used to actually do research decades ago, but like a long time ago. But the one thing, not this kind of research, different kind of research, but the one thing about research that is so fascinating is like you, they'll put together so that they can explain their point of view, but the devil's in the details. So when you start going through this stuff and going, well, they're at 50%, now we're at 28%. Well, that's telling you something. What's that telling you? Well, they're buying less technology, aren't they? Because they don't see the value in it as much anymore. So that's gonna do two things, okay? That's gonna be like a golf ball through a garden hose because now they're all gonna buy the same darn names, aren't they? Because now they have to buy NVIDIA, they have to buy those names or else what the heck do they own? Why, why the heck do they wanna own information technology if they don't own the right names? And now the names of those are getting more and more specific. All right, got it, good. So then we keep looking into what they want us to look into and you can tell what they want us to look into because why? It's highlighted and they're trying to show you here. What I would argue is that this is telling you why you need to be in the exact right names and not be broadening out. And those exact names we've talked about at length, but uh, there's, there's more to that and we can get into it a little bit. But let's go. All right, so 
I don't know, I might want to be in the same names that consistently outperform the S&P right now. Then you go materials, materials kicking up, so they're broadening out there. But if I'm looking for something broadening, why would I want to go where two to one is when I can go to where four to one is or three to one is, okay? Why would I want to go into healthcare when, when they're dropping? Consumer discretionary is dropping, but look at the drop. It's pretty much not that notional. I mean, in other words, if you look at this kind of drop, what's it telling us? 54 to 47, what is that really doing? Couple names. One, one guy came in, what happened? Walmart didn't do well. So do you see, what, and I'm not saying Walmart, but you, you, you get where I'm going with it. Doesn't matter, right? Okay, you're not looking at this precipitous drop where half the names. You're looking at a drop that is 10%, right? Okay, so if there's 50 names out there of in consumer discretionary, then maybe we're looking at five that aren't doing well, right? So there's a change there. But staples are doubling. So if I'm looking, for, if I'm looking to get into areas where they're doubling and we're seeing more money flow, which of these would you pay attention to? We'd have to pay attention to energy. Okay, index, sector, stock, get it? If I'm just looking and saying, I don't want to guess, just go look at what's going on in industrials and get involved there because that is obviously very clearly the sector where they are putting a lot of money. And when I show you some of these names that are out there in industrials, some people are going to be shocked. Shocked, I tell you. And I'm going to tell you right now, I was shocked. So what else do they do? Then what Sentiment Trader does, again, this is not my research, so I want to make sure that I give them the credit where credit is due, because I think it's very important to do that. If you look at S&P and you look at positive absolute trends, so they're t showing you absolute trends, sector by sector examination of trend scores for S&P 500 members. Okay, positive absolute, meaning that this has a trend better than anything absolute. Well, absolute is absolute. I'm more interested in relative performance because absolute is this, right? So then you start looking at absolute and going, I just need anything better than an absolute. And then you would have to kind of go through this and go, well, consumer discretionary, financials, okay? Healthcare, industrials, information technology. All right, so that doesn't really limit me down. But then if you start going through the percentage of scores with a trend score of 10X or of plus 10. So they have a trend score range, which I kind of like. I like it better than the way that they do. I like it better than how they do uh, relative strength to some extent, and I'll explain why. Relative strength, those scores that are on like IBD, anybody can do. Like you can just literally compare them in the sector charts that I put out for you guys for free. But this stuff, they have a trend and they have a calculation that they do and I, I find it pretty fascinating. But so you start going through here, percentage with a trend score and they go, okay, well, who's got, who's got the percentage with the highest trend score? And so you go through this and you go, okay, well, here's a 53, here's a 57, here's a 57. Okay, so who's got the highest trend scores? Uh, right, percentage of stocks with the highest trend scores of plus 10 because that's as high as you can go. All right, so financials, then industrials and information technology. And the other slot told us before that they're actually decreasing here, not increasing, right? Whereas this has been staying stagnant, okay? And this is roughly not really where you want to be right now because of where we're at, but we can talk about that in a moment. Percentage of stocks with a positive relative trend score. Okay, percentage with a positive relative trend score. Percentage with a relative trend score of plus 10. Okay, percentage with a positive relative trend score. That's good, and I care about that, right? And then when I go through this, who's got the most? Stocks with a percentage of positive trend score, meaning I'm not at a negative because it goes from negative 10 to positive 10. All right, so who's got the most? Okay, industrials, information technology. But we know information technology from the previous slide is decreasing, not increasing. So what was this three months ago? We don't know, but I guarantee you it was higher. That much we know. See how see it's all connected? All right, let's keep going. So percentage with a relative trend score of 10, they highlighted it and I agree with their analysis where they're looking at this and going, okay, so what does this mean? It means that percentage of stocks that are in the industrial with a relative trend score of 10, 10 is their highest. They're telling you that 26% of every stock that's in the industrial sector has the highest possible trend score. Now, where do you see this? Now, you'll note something here, usually right up here, I have the, uh, the, the symbol and everything. The symbol's right here, the name's right here, and I'm gonna use the old school watermark that's going across these charts for now. Uh, I found a way to make it brighter, in my opinion, and you should be able to say it pretty clearly. Um, just let me know your comments on this, how you feel about that versus having it up here. I, I think it's better, but I'm, I'm more interested in what you can see, and I know a lot of people use the, their mobile phone to watch these, or mobile phone, mobile, like I'm fancy but you get where I'm going with this. All right, so here's the RSP and we can all see what's going on. Great, got it. Where do you take a look at some of these names? Because I, I was kind of, I'll just admit, I was a little shocked by some of this because these are not names that I'm looking at. So here's Eaton. Now, why are we looking at this? This is an industrial. 
And look at how this thing's breaking out, pardon me. I gotta set this up, because pre-market we do dark mode. I guess people like the dark mode better in the morning. I guess I do too, to be honest with you. So, all right, so here we are, and look at these breakouts. Now, I'm gonna just give you a couple of them. But I would suggest that you go through these industrials, because the name Beast comes to mind. Like, I, I'm literally sitting here going, I'm beating my head trying to trade SMCI, which we're doing, we're having a lot of fun, and we did excellent with NVIDIA, I'm gonna show you this in a minute. And I wanna show you again when I talk about fighting for inches versus yards, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that and then how to get there. Like, how are, you, how are we getting there? All right, so this is one way. I'm gonna show you another way. But so here we are, and look at these breakouts on GE, okay? So ETN, GE, and, and you start going through them like, I was kind of, I knew this one was taking off because someone brought it up the other day, but I'm just gonna be candid. Like a lot of my scans, I'm not really looking for Ingersoll Rand, but if I look at Ingersoll Rand and what's going on here, that this is pretty staggering stuff. And it's not just there. If, we, if you go back and look at that video or that part of the video, where do you see some of these other charts? And it, it tells me why we're doing how, why we are doing as good as we're doing in some of these other names. So this is something I don't think I've ever, I've been trading over 20 something years. I don't think I've ever bought this name, HII. Look at this, I mean, it's perfect. We can throw in the volume and everything, but understand where, what I'm saying. Why would industrials be breaking out? And this is the other thing I'm trying to wrap my noodle around. Why are industrials breaking out right now when you have a dollar that's rallying? and we're supposed to be going into a recession because that's really not supposed to happen, right? Here's Picard. These are all industrial names. They're all breaking out. They're all going higher. How many of us are really watching this? I know one guy is because he brought up Ingersoll Rand uh, in the pre-market live. And that's why I love the pre-market live. It's just not me like ranting and saying, look at me. It's us like exchanging ideas. That's why I have it set up that way. So then I look at this and then I look at the sectors that we've been in that we're doing well with. And I look at like XLY, which is a sector that we've done exceptionally well with. And I look at this setup on XLY because of course, you know, in, in recessions, everybody buys things. Again, I, all I can tell you is what's happening. Not whether there's gonna be a recession or not be a recession. I have my own belief that they're kicking the can down the line, but it doesn't matter what I think. I can only trade what's happening. So then I go through some of my names and I've done this a couple times looking at Europe and what's going on over there. And then you see Ferrari, all time highs, right? And then you go take a look at Hermes, all time highs, okay? Louis Vuitton had record earnings. And here we are like fighting the tape and saying this shouldn't be happening, blah, blah, blah. Look at these names on the industrial space. Look at these names on the, on, in the, uh, consumer discretionary space. This is one that we just recently bought. We haven't had, we haven't lost a night's sleep over it, right? I mean, we literally have not lost a night's sleep. Look at this ANF we bought months ago. Have not lost a night's sleep over it. I think we're up $50 now in, in Abercrombie and Finch of all names. And, and the point of me showing you this is, while it's like great and it's sexy and we're talking about NVIDIA and, some, and all these other names, there are names out there that are every week are just going higher. I mean, since we've been in this name, which I believe was this date because of the reversal in earnings, I've had one week where I've had to worry about it, literally one week, and that's it. So this is us looking at data and saying, okay, we're gonna look at the world and we're gonna take this data and we're gonna look at the index, then we're gonna look at what? We're gonna look at the sector, and then we're gonna look at the stock. And we're gonna look at that, right? And we're gonna combine all that, the index, sector, and stock, let's make this dark again, and when we're looking at that, what are we really doing? Well, we're looking at that with the index sector in stock, but we're looking at that, and I'm gonna go old school with the stool before we got someone to make us graphics. But, and we'll use this as the stool, the top of the stool. But we're looking at that in regards to what? Index sector stock, but we're looking at that in regards to the macro, the fundamental, and the technicals of the market, right? So this, all of this, all of this, and we'll change the color of it. Oops, that's not gonna change the color. I have, to go, I have to go back to that and do it a different way. But all of that is in relation to this, and we'll change the color so people don't get baffled. All of this is in relation to this, and for whatever reason, it is industrials, and it is these consumer discretionary numbers that they are just buying the living heck out of. So we can sit here and talk about the market all we want, and interest rates, and the dollar, and China, and the elections and everything we want. Or, or we could do the analysis of what the market's telling us instead of us telling the market what it's doing and just participate and make money. One sounds a lot better to me. Let me show you another edge that you can utilize in your own trading that I think 95% of people are just getting this completely wrong. So one of the things I get asked a lot about is just performance, P&L. And I had a really cool conversation. I'm doing dark mode. Comment on the dark mode. I, 
I, I like it, it's way easier on the eyes, but if there, it's a problem for some reason, just let me know. But the purpose of me showing this is so there, there's a couple of misnomers out there. And whenever anybody joins like our community, the Alpha Chasers community, I always do these onboarding calls. Um, they don't have to do them, but I like to talk to everybody to find out what's going on in their head and why they joined, uh, how they found us. It helps me create better content for people, right? Just makes sense, talk to the people that are in your community. And it's an actually real community. But people are floored by a couple things. They're floored by like the win ratio and how that doesn't have to be 75, 80%. So I, I'm gonna say a couple things here. Um, I don't think they're gonna be overly controversial to people that have been trading for a period of time, but I think that is worth, it's worth noting. And I'm recording this at Saturday, uh, Saturday early morning, so you're gonna watch me slip, you know, slurp coffee and sit in the flannel. But the important thing is the, co <laughs> is the content, so don't comment. Uh, but there's a couple things here I really want to go over. So the first thing is the trade win ratio and the profit factor. Okay, You do not need to have the biggest winners in the world to make money. You need consistency. Consistency. And it is a driving force in everything. But for our purposes, I want to show you something. So here's your win ratio from Jan 1st to February. I'm right 54.78% of the time so far this year. Uh, if you look at the profit factor, I'm at 2.32, all right? And trade expectancy, this is very important. And I, I'm gonna say this, I don't care if you use TradeZilla or not. I coached people for over 17 years before even founding this community. I used to do my own spreadsheets. I switched to these guys. I think it's like 40, 50 bucks a month. They import everything, whatever. I have no affiliation with them. I don't care if you use TraderSync. I just use this one because I just like the way that it's laid out and I like all the data. So, but that which gets measured gets results. I've had people that I coached or people that I've just given this to that have reached out like a, a week or two later after doing it and going, oh my God, I had no idea how awful I was or I had no idea that I kept doing this one thing. That which gets measured gets results, period. All right. So this is where we are in the year. Where, why am I showing you this? So a couple reasons. Number one, uh, I'm gonna show you January so that you can see where we're at. All right, so this was January um, and it's really important for people to get this. You're gonna have days where you're grinding, you're gonna have big days and you're gonna have days that you lose. Uh, anybody that tells you they don't have a losing day, you need to run away screaming. Okay, anyone that tells you they can't improve, I've been doing this 20 something years, I'm 48 now. So like I've been doing this 20 something years. You have losing days, guys. There's days when it's red. And there's days where you're going to look at this and go, why the heck am I even doing this, right? So they exist. So understand that. All right. So that's the first thing. You're going to have red days. But there's something that else I want to show. So let me show you this first. This is January and you can just see the curve. All right. Uh, I get asked a lot, what did this account start with? Uh, I think this account was at 200 in the beginning of the year uh, in January. I think it's already at 180. Uh, people that I, I want to get this out. I run this aggressive. This account is not the only account. This account is run super aggressive and I link it to the Alpha Chasers community and the ideas that we're doing in there and I link them aggressively to the day trading and swing trading that we are doing in there. I compartmentalize my accounts and I have other accounts that are long-term accounts. For example, I have a position in NVIDIA. I think it was last May. I've never even looked at or never even touched. So it's very, it's very different, but understand that. I compartmentalize it because it's the way that my mind works. Doesn't mean that you have to compartmentalize it. It means understand that I don't rock and roll like this on my <laughs> on my net worth. It's how I trade this one account with very different styles for day trading and swing trading in order to produce alpha, right? Because that's what you're trying to do. If you weren't trying to produce alpha, then all you need to do is just buy a you know another um, you know some other fund or something. I don't know. Buy an ETF. Get on with your day. Read a nice book. All right, so this is where you're at on the month, and this is where it gets really important. So this is the month. So we did 70 that month, we made 235 on a trade. Look at my profit factor, because this is the important thing. Let me click over here and get my trusty pointer so that you get this, because you're gonna wanna understand why I'm showing you this, and then I'm gonna show you what it takes in order to really get this. And no, you can't trade from a mountaintop or a beach. You can if you already are planned, but other than that, no. And you're gonna have to work more than an hour a day. I know, shocking. Here's the trade expectancy, here's the two to one. All right, so here's what I want you to get. This is my average win-loss. Every time I touch the computer, I lose $528 on my trades. Every time I touch the computer, I make $880 on my trades. The more trades that I do, if I can do this, I want to get this point clear to everybody. If every time I lose, I, I, win 500, I lose $528. If every time I win, I make $880. Why do I not want to trade during the day? Why would I ever stop trading? You, you wouldn't. So the first thing you need to be aware of is these people that come out and say, oh, I trade, I hit my levels and I'm done for the day. Why would you ever be done? Like for what purpose are you done? Okay, so that's something that people need to get through their head. I'm not saying like they may have one style that they have down, down 
and that's their style. Like, let's say if you tra trade zero dated options and you're worried about the theta, the time value, I get you trade the first hour of the market and the last hour of the market because you're worried about your zero dated options. That's one style of trading and you only have an edge during those periods of time. I, I get that. The people that are out there trading and saying, oh, I'm done for the day. Why? Like if you're, if you're win, if every time you touch the computer, your win is greater than your loss, why are you done for the day? I want work, uh, you want work life balance? Uh, you're, you're watching the wrong video, okay? This is the goal. Every time I touch it, this is what happens. So, but am I at 60%? No. No, I'm at 54%, and this is this is like so important. Just remember this number, remember this profit factor. All right, so this is what happens every time I touch it. All right, so let's go and remember these numbers. Let's go to February. What's that, Friday? All right, so let's get to that. I think Friday we did well. No, Thursday we did well. They booked it on Thursday. All right, so this is where I'm at for the month of Feb. All right, so why is this important? What's it, 123? So watch this. Look at my average win-loss, 952. 437. So I've gone from what? The 187, 167, something like that to two, a little over two. Okay. Look at my win ratio. All right. 55%. Look at my profit factor. Look at my trade expectancy. Okay. So the only thing that's changed, just let's, let's get this out. All things being equal. And this is what I've made. Look at the percentage and difference in PL. What tells you the amount of trades I did there? Uh, look at the percentage of PL. Okay. An increase in PL between January and February, right? So you go here and you go, all right, what's Jan? Okay, and then you go Feb. Probably an easier way to do this, but whatever. All right, so here's Jan, here's Feb. All right, so what what we're getting by that, oh, I could do year to date, all oh, that's right here, last 30 days. Cool, last month, oh, I could just flip to it. All right, this month, last month. Oh, that's interesting. I never even looked at those little buttons. All right, anyway, what's the big difference here? This win ratio versus, let's just go last month and see what happens. Oh, that makes life so much easier, doesn't it? All right. So you can see the difference in PL. Why did that happen? The win ratio went up. The profit factor went up. So the only difference between these, oh, well, that's so much easier. The, the difference between these is the profit factor. Here, I'll show you that, that so you can say it. And just so we're clear about this, I have zero problem. You want time and sales? Email me, put it in the comments. I'll drop the whole time and sales of all these trades right into some Dropbox somewhere uh, and go to town, tear it apart. Um, I have zero problem with that like zero. So the purpose of this and the purpose of understanding this, right? And here's the, the red days. And this is the day I was, what was I doing here? I was shorting SMCI because I'm going to pick the top, right? And then you catch yourself doing stupid stuff. I do stupid stuff. People do stupid stuff. So I'm going to pick the top, right? And so there's some losses in here and some Tesla got me again. Uh, and this SMCI put got me. All right. So that's what happens. But you catch yourself. The more you do this, you catch yourself. I don't know what a, Zil a, a Zealous score is. Maybe 81 is good. If I go here and I take a look at these, right? Okay. So I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. All right. Whatever. The, the yield curve is constantly up. That's not the point of this. This is the point. You need to focus on inches, not on yards. And I, I really want to get this point across to people. The only reason why this has gone up when I would refer to it as exponentially is because in February, my profit factor is not where it was in January. I've done better, right? I've done better than last month. I was at two to one. I'm at 2.67 to one. My trade win ratio is at 54.24, right? And then you come here and you look at this month and it's at 55. Those little nuances, those 75 basis points that I fought for here to get this to 2.18, to get this to where this is, those nuances, that's why the account's up. The account's not up because I'm like so great at picking out this name or I have this super winner. It's doing things consistently and then finding out and, and changing based upon the current economic climate or the current macroeconomic climate. That's what you want to do. You constantly want to analyze your trading. So th there's the purpose of this is understanding the misnomers that are out there. There is no holy grail. There is nobody doing 70, 80%. It's Steve Cohen's best guy is doing, I think, 62 or 63%. I think last year he made nine figures for himself. Okay, so you, know, you can sit there and you can pretend that I got to be right, or you can come up with a consistent process that makes you money. And this is what people are missing out. They all want to say NVIDIA is too high, NVIDIA is too low, NVIDIA is a, oh, it's, it's a scam. This is a scam. That's a scam. Everything's a scam. I got it. Okay. Here's your job as a trader. Your job as a trader is to make money. If that means you're trading NVIDIA and you think it's a scam, who cares? If that means a recession's coming, 
who cares, right? Your job is to make money, not tell the market what it's gonna do. And if you are more interested in that, become an economist. But what you need to focus on are these numbers. And you need a trading journal if you don't have one. You also need a process. And that's where we're going with this. You need to understand you're fighting for inches. You're not fighting for yards. You also need a process. You need to plan and you need to look at when things are going to happen. And then you have to have a process for that so that you can have an edge, okay? And I'm gonna give you an example of that right now. I want you to watch how we planned in the community for NVIDIA's earnings, how ahead of time we knew exactly what we were looking for and then exactly what to do when it happened. Please comment on this and how I could make this better um, or if this is helpful, if it's not helpful. But the key takeaway here is we're fighting for inches. We're fighting for basis points on our win rate. We're fighting for basis points on our profit factor, okay? And that you need a process and a plan. So please take a look at this. Now, this is really an important concept to get. So what we're gonna take a look at here very quickly is we're just gonna take a look at us planning for how to get involved here. How are we going to get involved in this trade? There's only one way to get involved, and that's to know everything that you possibly can know ahead of that. You can never know everything, we all know that. But the goal is to get ahead of it. So what we're doing and what you're about to watch is how we planned for NVIDIA's earnings. And what's important about this is we did not know if this was the outcome, I'm not pointing a process up here, I'm just saying that in general, we did not know if that was the outcome, we did not know if this was the outcome, we did not know if this was the outcome. We don't know. We're planning, we have a, we have a bias, we're aware of our bias. If we look and say that the expectations are where the stock closed because they are the expectations or the stock would not have closed there, it's irrefutable. So then what happens is the movement, okay. The question becomes, are you going to be a participant that is going to get involved in this outcome, this outcome, or this outcome? And the answer is you really don't want to do it until you know what the outcome is, but you want to be prepared for it, right? And so the sooner that you're prepared, the better, because the quicker you can move, as you saw after hours, and I'll show you in a moment, but the sooner that you can move. So you always want to be the most prepared person that you can possibly be going into this. Because again, you must realize you're competing against the most disciplined and smartest people in the world. Here, watch this clip. Good earnings. So let's go on the assumption that NVIDIA has good earnings. Let's clean up my levels for a second. All right. So the first assumption is NVIDIA will have good earnings. So this is assumption number one. All right. NVIDIA has good earnings. NVIDIA goes higher. Okay? That's an assumption. Okay. NVIDIA has good earnings. You're assuming because it has good earnings, it goes up. We don't know that. You can have good earnings and go down. Okay. So that's the first thing. First assumption is good earnings means stocks going higher. Okay. We're assuming good earnings means that it's going higher. Right. Okay. Because that's what's supposed to happen. So we're making an assumption there. Okay. Bad earnings and we're assuming it goes down. That's a more viable assumption, correct? Because bad earnings means the stock's overpriced. Good earnings, and we're assuming that it's just going to go up. We don't know that. A lot of people are assuming that this is going to mark the top of the market, right? So if you go here and you look at these dates like you know July, August 23rd, or you look here and you see November 21st, these were key events for NVIDIA. They were not key events for the market. The market still went higher, but they were key events for NVIDIA. All right, we have earnings coming out. We're going on the assumption that good earnings mean it's going to go higher. I would levy that your better assumption is that bad earnings or inline earnings mean it's going lower. I would not assume that good earnings are going to get us much higher than where we are right now, especially in this market. All right, so we need great earnings. So what we should do is focus on what is that bar, okay? So we should focus on what is that bar? What would be the bar for great earnings? All right, so let's look at something and let's quantify something so that we can look and have an edge. So the very first thing that we should be doing is understanding what are what are expectations, right? That is the very first thing. Simple. This is just from earnings whisper, okay? And so they're going to come out at 420. The call will be at five. Forget gross margins. Forget all that for now. We'll talk about that later. But for right now is what's going on right here. This is the consensus, 453. If you come here and you don't beat by 467, so remember this, okay? If you don't beat by 453 and you don't beat by 467, you are going to have a problem. Okay, Apex, please put that out there. I'll say them again. 453 is the estimate. 453 is the estimate. 467 is the whisper. If you're not over the whisper, the stock's going to go lower. That's the very first thing that you have to understand. The stock will go lower, period. It's not a debate. 
it will go low if it misses. I don't even think I don't even think great earnings guidance will get it up if it doesn't beat the whisper. If you don't beat and come in at like 22 or 23, stock's going to go lower. So if you don't beat by 20.24, if you don't come in at 22 or 23, stock's going to go lower. It's really that simple, okay? And that's how you need to view it. It's not up for debate or anything like that. That's ex that's all you really need to focus on. And that's how you need to look at it. All right. What's happening with the stock now, it matters, but it doesn't matter, right? If it does what we're going about to go over, then it's not going to matter. All right. So that's where you have to be. If you're not at any of these things, you have a problem. All right. If we're looking at this and saying that that's the issue, then what we have to do is say, okay, well, what do varying degrees get us? And for that, we have to go and look at 2025. Okay, so what we're going to do, what we're looking for, these are the bear cases, these are the base case, and this is the bull case. They are expecting, forget forget include, exclude, okay? We're not going to get into that. What you need to do for tonight is understand the, the high end of this range. That's all you need to do. So what we're going to do with this is just, I, I don't think that'll work on here. What we're going to do is just look at the high end of that range. That's all you're going to do, Okay. Forget the middle end of the range and trying to get into a range. Just look at the middle range, okay? That's Or forget this, just high end, that's it. What you want to see, if you come in around 30 bucks for 2025 guidance, okay? 2025 guidance, and you can screenshot this as percentage of income, OPEX, gross profit. You can screenshot this if you want, so you have it. Just don't pass it around. If you come in lower than 30 on the year, your stock's going lower, period. End of story. The stock will go lower. 32, the stock could go higher. 36, the stock's going higher. If you start showing 36 or greater for next year, the stock's going higher. Okay. This is your guide to determining if they're going to be good or bad tomorrow when they're discussing it. All right. So 30, 30, I would say 30, 32, and 36. They're your ranges. Anything under 30, anything under 30, and the stock's going to get hammered. All right. So if they guide lower, the stock's going to get ha hammered. If they guide 32, you're probably going to trade up a little bit. If they guide over 36, the stock's going to explode. Okay, because this is so they're not supposed to be at 36 to 40 to th till 2027. Uh, all right. So th these are your numbers. You can look at your gross profits and look at those as well if you want to. They they're going to guide. They're going to give you something. They're going to give something on before the call. They're going to give something before the call. There's no doubt about it. They It would be rare for them not to, but if they really want to be mean, then they won't, okay? But they're going to, I would think that they're going to do something, all right? But that's where I think you should. their head should be, all right? So that's your guideline, and that's how you have to look at it. You need to look at those numbers and nothing else, but just be prepared. I'm going to just be blunt. This is going to move violently. Even if it lands in the same spot, it's not going to matter. Even if it closes flat, it's still going to move extremely violently. You're going to be up, you know, up a hundred, down a hundred tonight at some point, one way or another. All right. So if you don't want to play it, don't play it. Just look at that chart. All right. That's it. That's what I have. There's one name. Remember, S-O-X-L, S-O-S-X, both lag, okay? Meaning the names are going to move before these, these move. And they're the easiest way to trade them if you don't know what to do. You'll know exactly which way the whole market's going to go tomorrow after NVIDIA's conference call. All right, I got to get back to it. That's it. Now, I hope you found that helpful. And the purpose of that is relatively simple. It's to show you how we were prepped before this even happened. And let me show you what that did for us so that you can see this. Now, I've shown this a couple times, I think. Uh, maybe not, but let's go to let's go to a five-minute chart, and then we're going to go to here. And so what we're going to look at are just a couple things here. This is the earnings. And so we're completely set up. We know exactly what we're looking for, right? And so because we know what we're looking for when earnings comes out, and we're watching all these people that don't understand it, and we're watching them sell into this that provides opportunity for us to buy now in front of you is just the community and i'm going to point out a couple things that i think are pertinent for people i'm also going to try to keep these videos down uh to that 45 minute level I seem to lose people when they start looking at this going oh god he's going to talk for an hour so i'll just i'm just going to push the content through throughout the week uh but let's get to this i'm going to try to keep it to 45. this is just me ahead of it talking about what i'm doing just telling people to prep you know I saw a request they want me live for that. No, I need to read and get the information out. But the video will move semi specifically ARM, then AMD, delayed reaction. So we're prepped. We know where we're going to listen, when we're going to listen. We're watching the movement. We're watching someone get ahead of the quarter. We're watching the movement. So that's telling me what I need to do and what I need to be aware of, right? And then we're reiterating what we went over on that call. 
right? So it's constantly, we're constantly drilling it into our heads. This is what we need. This is where we need to be. Go look at that, watch that video again that I just, that just played, right? So why I'm doing this is so that you can see where I'm adding, where I'm telling them that they're adding. So this is the purpose of this, right? You can see I'm buying, I'm selling, I'm buying, right? I'm constantly buying, sold more, stopped, constantly in, constantly out. I'm gonna walk through one of these trades. Uh, the call slammed, people couldn't get on it. Okay, this is us looking at that thing. Where were they supposed to be on gross margins? Where are they at? Okay, and so you're able, as that data is coming out, we know what scenarios we're looking for, okay? So when people tell you that you can't find an edge, all our levels are marked off. So we know exactly what we're going to do. This is the level of detail. If you wanna compete, so you get this, this is the level of detail that you need to go through if you wanna compete. So the purpose of me showing you this is understand that, right? Understand that this is the level of detail that people are going through. And that's when I have the saying and people, you know, people, when they hear it, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're playing against the smartest, most disciplined people in the world. And so what I always say is like, you think, and I just say, try to be nice about it, but you're going to compete with me and you're not going to even be prepped for the call. I, I wish you well, but good luck to you, right? So then we look at that and you go, okay, well, what are they doing on social media? Oh, well, you, you need to sell because of this, right? You need to buy here. You need to sell here. They don't even have a clue what's going on, right? They're, they're literally giving you their money to an extent. I mean, I hate to be that crude about it, but that's really what they're doing, right? So you have to understand the level of detail that people like myself are actually going through and prepping to be ready for this. And I'm still only at 55%. So that tells you anything. But this is another great example of that concept of reflexivity where people don't understand where they are in the pecking order. So this is before earnings, right? So the expectations, no matter what you say, the expectations of NVIDIA are here, okay? That's, their, that's where the expectations are. If they're here, because that's where the stock closed, and the expectations and outcome the next day is here, then you have people that are buying that day because they read the paper, went from there. Okay, the expectations the next day is the people that don't watch earnings, right? So these people don't watch earnings, the people that bought here, they only saw the market the next day that it's up and now they're gonna buy, okay? And, but the outcome now is here, right at the same spot. So you have different outcomes, right? And what people were expecting. Now, if you take a look at these outcomes, we could actually go further and say some people were even expecting this as the lowest outcome right? And this as the highest outcome. All right. And somewhere in between here, we're going to say that this is the outcome that we got. And we're going to say that this is the base case. But the difference is the person that knew from here to here that they wanted to be involved versus the person from here to here that wanted to be involved and person that here to here wanted to be involved. And now that person that bought after everybody knows all the information and saw all the upgrades they're gonna wonder why they didn't make money and why this is the outcome, right? Versus their expectations. See how the expectations change, right? That's the definition of reflexivity there in three bars because you have a group of people that have completely different expectations and then you have the outcome. The outcome's the outcome. It's not, it's not debatable. When you're gonna participate in it is, is what is debatable, right? That's, that's the only thing that you can change. And the only way that you're going to get that edge to be ahead of everybody else to know more than everybody else so that you can make a more informed decision. And whether that is through technicals or macro or fundamentals, it doesn't matter. But there's a reason why we were buying stock here when everybody else is selling, right? And there's a reason why retail's up here and doing what it's doing. And there's a reason why people are out there telling you that NVIDIA someday is gonna blow up. And that's fine, everything blows up, everything blows up, right? but it just might go to 1600 before then, okay? Before it goes to zero, which is for some reason what people think it's going to do. And it's very important to understand that there is outcomes and somewhere in the middle is usually the truth. That's it.